I'm Dr. Kalpana Nagpal, Senior Consultant at Indrapress Apollo Hospital in the Department of ENT, Head and Neck Surgery and Robotic Surgery. Snoring and sleep apnea has been prevalent time immemorial, but you know, the snoring disorders are various. Sleep apnea is the most serious of all of them. Snoring is ignored by most people. Snoring is you know, associated by this critical condition called sleep apnea. It's a multi-level disease where the upper airway collapses at various levels. So the airflow is not uniformly maintained during sleep. During the seven to eight hours of sleep, oxygen saturations need to be maintained roughly a 98 to 100%. But in patients suffering from sleep apnea, the oxygen drops now and then, now and then. In fact, the breathing pauses, like breathing stops for a few seconds several times during sleep. Now, the multiple inter interruptions in sleep actually affects heart and brain activity. This is confirmed and uh, there's, there's been largely established data throughout the world and uh, the large countries like you know america japan and korea etc have even published data where uh, snoring and sleep apnea is, is associated with cardiac dysfunction and brain strokes and even muscle dystrophies and various various other conditions like in ENT even tinnitus and uh, sensory neural deafness can be related to this apart from of course ENT cancers any cancers for that matter such patients have high incidence more than 10 times the risk The, still, the challenge here is at two levels. One is patient acceptance that it is actually a serious disorder. Now, these people have to understand that if they do not want to walk into the ER with, you know, chest pain or suffer from, you know, any triple vessel disease, or if they do not want to undergo CABGs or anything for that matter, to you know, it is it is to be adopted at the preventive health medicine level. Even cardiologists and physicians throughout the world, I think, should emphasize the sleep apnea in their clinic itself. At OPD level in ENT, like you know, every day I screen a lot of sleep apnea cases. We have these AHC patients, which means annual health check patients. They come for preventive health checks. On a day, you know, every day at least 10 patients of sleep apnea are screened and out of the 10, one might come back saying, Doc, what do we do next? And that's the time then I advise them that they need to go for a study called overnight polysomnography. This is one night, uh, you know, monitoring of uh, sleep patterns. It is basically, uh, you know, REM related hypotonia, which means in sleep, the tone of the muscles anyway is low in even normal people. But in such people, the hypotonia, meaning the tone is so low that the uh, airway collapses. And this collapse, this is what is critical. <coughs> You know, it can even affect the memory of patients. It can even affect the sexual dysfunction. And it can increase the irritability. It can increase daytime fatigue. Even accidents can happen. And this is why, you know, it is to be implemented even at the government level where preventive health programs are taken up. Sleep apnea is to be screened even in, you know, drivers driving on the roads. Now, currently, we have this uh, robotic surgery treatment for sleep apnea. For a long, long period of time, you know, pulmonologists and physicians would actually recommend uh, CPAP and BiPAP. Now, these are external devices used by the patient, and they're asked to use, to, uh, use it overnight during sleep. And uh, the question is, how many of them use it regularly? The minimum usage should be at least six hours every night. But uh, most people just, you know, use it for two or three hours. And some people, you know, even give it up. And so there's no point using it for a temporary period of time. If, because if one opts for CPAP, it has to be a lifelong thing. Even during travel, they're supposed to carry with them. And they, uh, you know, use it every night and all night. Now, this is not happening. And so there were some surgical options also available for a very long time. In fact, I've been treating sleep apnea patients, other sleep surgeries as well, for uh, more than 15 years. But the outcomes with other sleep surgeries is not so good as to the current most available treatment that is a robotic treatment for sleep apnea, which includes midline glossectomy. It is basically, you know, the, for in simple language, for patients uh, who understand this, the base of the tongue, meaning the backside, the posterior most part of the tongue, is the main culprit because that's the one which actually collapses behind and that touches the palate and shuts off the airway completely. Now, this is the 
main, uh, you know, it depends. Again, you know, we have grading and we see how severe is the grade and how much is the obstruction happening. And based on that, we decide it's some treatment plan like, uh, you know, this transoral surgery, which means we're putting the robotic arms through the throat without any external scar or incision. And depending upon the level of obstruction, as I said, tongue base, some could be having a floppy epiglottis, which is that valve behind that, you know, it, 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 that also probably needs correction. In addition, there could be a simple nasal procedure where there could be, you know, deviated nasal bone or polypi, etc., performed in concurrent. Like we are doing a, a multi-level surgery at the same sitting, meaning robotic uh, midline glossectomy along with other procedures, and it's giving us great outcomes. robotic surgery for sleep apnea. In fact, we have published uh, our uh, uh, paper, you know, it was a poster presentation in the uh, Europe, uh, in Europe, uh, it was the World Congress held last month. And uh, we, uh, I mean, uh, you know, there are not too many data available in Asian population. And uh, for this large series, like uh, we had uh, 45 cases, uh, both pre and post-operative AHIs were monitored. AHI means the apnea hypopnea index. The physicians do understand how important this is. So we have seen, uh, you know, significant drop of AHI levels post this. And as far as patients are concerned, patients' quality of life tremendously improves. And we have had this patient feedback register maintained and some vi interesting videos and emails coming to us saying, Doc, you know, we even now remember the dreams that are happening during our sleep, which earlier we used to never recall the following morning. So these kind of things are very satisfying and gratifying. And, you know, it's uh, the increasing morning freshness and